Hi guys, this lesson is for section 13.3. We're going to be talking about the fundamental theorem of algebra. Our objectives for today are to express a polynomial in the factored form where we have a constant times two linear factors with lead coefficients of one. We are also going to be writing the equation of a specific quadratic using specific roots. So instead of getting a general equation for some polynomial, we're going to find a specific um, polynomial's equation for a quadratic. So let's talk about the fundamental so what the fundamental theorem of algebra states is that for every polynomial equation of this form here, you're going to have at least one root within the complex number system. So this number, this root does not have to be a real number. It can be, um, but it's going to be within the complex number system. So what this doesn't actually explicitly state, but what is also implied here is that the number of roots will at most be the degree of the polynomial. So if we have here, this is the degree n, if n is the degree, it's going to have at most n roots. Okay, these roots can be real, it can be complex, but we'll have at most n roots. So if we had something, say, x to the fifth, this will have at most five roots. Okay? Now, sort of similar to that idea is the linear factors theorem. All right, now what the linear factors theorem states is that if you have a polynomial with degree n, you can express that polynomial as the product of n linear factors. So this is in math symbols what that linear factors theorem is stating. But I'm going to try to break this down to make a little bit more sense. Let's say you started with um, a polynomial with a degree of 5. That means that you're going to be able to see at at most five distinct factors, but you will always be able to express them um, with five linear factors. So one, two, three, four, five. Now these factors, like I said, don't have to necessarily be distinct. So you might see a multiplicity. Now if I have a multiplicity of two, that means I need to get rid of one of these factors here, these linear factors. Um, and these linear factors don't necessarily have to be real. Okay, so um, they're all of the form x minus r. Right? What I'm saying here is that r doesn't have to be a real number. It can also be a complex number as well. Now, if it was a complex root with a degree of 2, then I would have to get rid of another one of these linear factors here so that I would be able to write this um, with a total of 5 roots, or I'm sorry, 5 linear factors, okay? Um, and that's really all that this linear factors theorem states. So it's basically the opposite of what we just talked about with the fundamental theorem of algebra. All right, now in problem number one, we are going to use the linear factors theorem to rewrite 3x squared plus x minus 2 as the product of two linear factors with a lead coefficient of 1, okay? So um, if I were to just factor this like normal, I would see this as 3x minus 2 times x plus 1. So this quadratic factors really easily for me into these two linear terms. But I want to express this as two linear terms with a coefficient of 1, which means that here I need to pull out that 3 and rewrite that as x minus 2 thirds times x plus 1. Now if you were to graph this, this quadratic here, or this quadratic here, you get the exact same picture here. So you're noticing that I have a root at uh, negative 1 and another root at positive 2 thirds. Okay, either of those come from this equation here. All right. Now, in problem 2, I have a cubic. So this is a degree of 3, and I want to express this as the product of 3, this time, linear factors. Okay, not just 2, but 3 linear factors. So I'm going to notice that I can uh, factor by grouping here. If I take out the x squared, that's the GCF here, I'm left with x plus 1. And out of the last two terms, if I factor out a negative 3, that's the GCF here, I'm left with x plus 3. Now I'm going to pull both of these GCFs together. So write that as x squared minus 3 times x plus, whoa, I totally factored that wrong. That's supposed to be a 3. Whoops. So I factor out the x squared, I should have pulled out, x, or I should be left over with x plus 3. Sorry about that if I just confused you. Um, and we should be left here with another x plus 3. All right, now I want to rewrite this so that I have three linear factors as opposed to just one here in this quadratic. So now I'm going to factor here as well. Now um, this is the difference of two squares, so this should factor into x plus the square root of three and x minus the square root of three. And then you have that times x plus three over here as well. 
So this is now x cubed plus 3x squared plus minus 3x minus 9, written as the product of three linear factors. That uh, a term out in front is just a 1. You don't need to write that in. But this is why we're seeing here these three distinct roots. So we would have a root at negative root 3, at positive root 3, and at negative 3. And you're seeing that here, here, and here. All right, now in number three, I just want to do a problem that's pretty much a review of something you've already seen before, um, before we get to number four, which is slightly different. So here I'm just asking you to create just a polynomial, not a specific one, but just a general polynomial that uses the table below. So I see that I have a root at x, or at negative one, which means that a factor for this polynomial, let's call it f of x, is x plus one. Now it has a multiplicity of two, so I'm gonna put out um, a degree of two here. I have another root at, at 3, which means I have a linear factor at x minus 3. Its multiplicity is just 1, so I leave it as x minus 3. And finally, I have another root at, at 0, which means x minus 0, or x is another root, or I'm sorry, factor, and I have a multiplicity of 2, so that's a degree of 2. Now, if I want to write this a little bit nicer, that would be x squared times x minus 3 times x plus 1 squared, okay? Now, in problem four, we're going to find the exact quadratic polynomial. So exact quadratic polynomial as opposed to just a polynomial. Because remember, I could have written this as three times x squared or negative three, and it would still satisfy this table. I could stick any number I want out in front of there, and I would have the same exact um, polynomial that satisfies these three conditions. So in problem four, when I ask for the exact, there's going to be something slightly different here. Now, um, if we have roots at negative 1 and 2, that means I have factors of x plus 1 and x minus 2, okay? Now, I don't know what the a value is for this exact quadratic, so I'm going to set that a value here out in front, and I'm going to say y is equal to this polynomial here. Now, I have a specific point, 6, 2, that I'm going to now be able to plug in. I can solve for the a here by substituting an x and a y value in, which is what I have here is that coordinate. So now I have the equation 2 equals a times 6 plus 1 times 6 minus 2. So I have 2 equals a times 7 times 4. And I end up with uh, 2 equaling 28a. Divide out that 28, and I am left with 1 14th. So the exact quadratic with roots at negative 1 and 2, and through the point 6, 2, is uh, either, you can actually just do f of x again, because it doesn't ask for an equation, it just asks for a polynomial. So I could write f of x equals 1 14th times x plus 1 times x minus 2. Notice that the degrees here add up to 2, which is why it's quadratic, um, and this would go through the point 6, 2. Now, if it had said find the quadratic equation, then you would put a 0 here instead of f of x. Just That's a little nitpicky, but make sure that you do know, understand the difference between just a general polynomial as opposed to an equation with, with these two roots. Okay? Okay, next up, we're going to be applying the linear factors theorem. Okay? Um, and the reason I want to prove the linear factors theorem is so that you guys are able to see the relationship between roots and coefficients of your original um, quadratic. Okay, so let's say I have a, uh, a quadratic of the form x squared plus bx plus c. So I'm going to let r1 and r2 be roots of this quadratic. Okay, now um, we know from before that r1 times r2 is equal to c, and r1 plus r2 is equal to negative b. This is something that we've, we've studied in a previous chapter. I think that was actually way back in chapter 1. But um, we want to actually prove this now. Okay, so let's let x squared plus bx plus c equal r1, or I'm sorry, x minus r1 times x minus r2. Now, by multiplying out the right-hand side here, I end up with x squared minus r1x minus r2x plus r1 times r2. Okay, um, and if I factor out the x term here, um, I'm left with this, okay? I take out that opposite sign, or the negative sign here, and I have r1 plus r2, the sum of those, plus r1 times r2. 
Now, we know how to equate coefficients since we've already studied um, sections 13.6 and 13.7 in the last chapter. I know that if I have this term here that must equal the quadratic, er, the quadratic term on the other side, and this b must equal the opposite of r1 plus r2. I also know that my constant term c has to equal the constant term over here, r1 times r2. So that here you can see the relationship between your roots and your coefficients. So don't forget this like very easy and nifty, I think, um, little shortcut for finding the original quadratic. So here's a problem, number five, where we could apply what that, you know, what we just went through, that proof here, um, to find the quadratic with roots 2 minus 3i and 2 plus 3i. So basically, um, instead of setting up, since I have these roots, instead of setting up the two linear factors x minus 2 minus 3i and x minus uh, 2 plus 3i, okay, those would be your factors, your linear factors here, instead of finding that and then multiplying that all out, I'm just going to use that shortcut here. All right, I'm going to use this shortcut here to find b and c. So b is equal to the opposite of r1 and r2, which means I'm just going to add these two terms together. So b is going to equal the opposite of 4, and then negative 3i plus 3i, those are going to cancel out for me. Okay, so I have b is equal to the opposite of 4, so negative 4. Now for c, I am simply going to multiply r1 and r2. Now, I think you guys should be able to remember a lot of these operations here um, with imaginary numbers, but when you multiply here, these complex numbers, you have a, uh, a term that's gonna drop out that, that negative 6i and the positive 6i will drop out, and you'll be left with negative 9i squared. Remember that i squared is equal to negative one, so really this is four plus nine, which results in 13, so c is equal to 13. So when it asks me to find the quadratic equation this time, not the quadratic polynomial, but the equ quadratic equation, this time I'm gonna um, make this an equation so that I have x squared minus four x, because this is my b term, um, plus 13 equal to zero. So this quadratic equation here would give me these two real roots, or I'm sorry, complex roots. Okay, that is the end of the lesson. Um, I will see you in class tomorrow. This stuff should be slightly new and slightly a review, but hopefully you're gonna get a lot of practice tomorrow because you're gonna watch this video and be so productive in class. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Good job.